Now the first feature that I'm going to do is I'm going to place a hole. And there's a couple of ways to place the hole and I'm going to show you um, all three of those here. Now the first way to, uh, uh, to, to place a hole is, is a hole can be a sketch based feature. Now so far everything we've done, the, uh, the, the, the extrusion, the revolution and the other extrusion were all sketch based features. They require a sketch in order for you to be able to create some sort of 3D form. Well, the hole is, is actually a hybrid of both a sketched feature and a placed feature. And I'm going to show you the difference here. So this being uh, the sketch, it automatically projected the sketch entities forward. That's a setting in your application options. So I'll go ahead and right click and finish the sketch. And note what happens when I click on this center point here. I have the ability to go ahead and tell it to create a hole. Now this particular hole, I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, three millimeters is the distance that I want. But the termination, I want it to go all the way through the part. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now the next one I'm going to create, um, I'm, not going to go, I'm not going to create a sketch on this one because I have another option to place a hole. So if I just call it the hole command, this is what I mean by it being a placed feature. I didn't have to have a sketch in order to place this feature into my part because the placement is going to be determined by a concentric relationship um, as you can see here. So I'll choose concentric and what it's asking me is what plane do you want to start this hole on? I'll go ahead and pick this front face right here. Next thing it's going to ask me is what is your concentric reference? Where do you want to maintain some sort of relationship of concentric uh, on this part? So I'll go ahead and pick the outside edge of that and you can see that it's, it's now centered the hole um, on the same center point of my revolution, right? So I'll change some, uh, some distances here. I want it to be eight millimeters in diameter. And again, I want it to go all the way through the part. And I'm going to choose apply. Now there's a difference between choosing okay and apply inside of Inventor. Apply assumes that you're going to place a series of holes or other commands that, that allow you to apply. So the apply keeps the command running rather than executing the command and then calling it back up again, right? So I'm going to do another concentric hole. So I'll say, you know, I want it to be concentric on that surface. And there's my concentric reference. Now th this one is actually going to be a tapped hole. So you can see I'll go down here and choose tapped and change it to my thread type. You'll see that Inventor includes a number of standards when it comes to threads. So I'll go ahead and choose the uh, metric profile and we'll call this a M4 all the way through the part tapped at a full depth and I'll go ahead and choose OK. And it went ahead and uh, in included the thread information in with that hole. And when I document this part in 2D, I'll be able to reference the hole note and all of the thread information will, will come across uh, as a hole note uh, for this part. All right, now two more features that I wanna go ahead and, and show you in, uh, in creating this first part. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call up the fillet command. Now, rather than uh, selecting it on the ribbon, the fillet command, as well as the chamfer command, is also um, a direct manipulation uh, feature. So if I click on an edge, it's gonna say, oh, you probably wanna create either a fillet or a chamfer. I'm gonna go ahead and choose fillet. And as you can see, I can just kinda drag this out a little bit and get a nice look as to what that's gonna, what that's gonna do before I execute the command. So on a three millimeter fillet on that edge, I'll go ahead and choose apply. Again, apply allows me to execute that particular fillet and continue on with others. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the top edge of that and the bottom edge of that. And as you can see, I'll kind of drag this out a little bit and I want a four and a half millimeter fillet. And there we go, I'll go ahead and choose okay. Now there's one more feature that, uh, that we're gonna add to this and that's gonna be the chamfer. Now the chamfer here, we'll go ahead and place it, oh, I don't know, right on this inside edge, why not? I'll go ahead and choose chamfer and it's gonna tell me, do you want equal distance, distance and angles, or two distances? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say distance and I'll type in, say, half a millimeter there. Okay, I'll go ahead and, and apply that. And one more, okay. So there's my half millimeter chamfer on this part and you have now created your first 3D component inside of Autodesk Inventor. Let's go ahead and hit save. So I'll go ahead and save this off and uh, I'm gonna call this steering knuckle.